Irashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this Saturday, we have Thunder Cross 2. Yet another Konami arcade classic. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. Developed by Konami, Thunder Cross 2 released to arcades in 1991. This title is a direct follow-up to Thunder Cross, which released in 1988. Unlike Thunder Cross, this title didn't really receive as many ports and versions, so there aren't many ways to play it outside of this arcade archive release, which is available on the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch, which is the version we're looking at today. So, Thunder Cross 2, my thoughts on it? Ultimately, if you're a fan of the original Thunder Cross, you'll like this title and I highly recommend it. If you were cool on the original Thunder Cross, maybe this one might not be the one for you. Outside of that, this is one that I personally have enjoyed a fair bit, but uh, rather than just go off of that, let's check out some gameplay and you can kind of make that determination whether this is something you're interested in yourself. Starting the game, we're taken to a basic arcade start screen. Once we've uh, put the credits into the machine, we start the game and we get a launch sequence. The game is two players simultaneous, so that's how we're going to show off the game, though that does make one minor gameplay change uh, to the way that everything would work. Uh, it's a standard horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up, which we'll kind of see right off the bat. Uh, but one thing I do want to point out is uh, the original Thunder Cross was known for its parallax scrolling. Three years later, that's not as impressive of a technique, so the, although there is a fair amount of parallax scrolling in this game, it's not as noticeable as the original title. So, uh, we have a standard horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up here, but the controls are relatively basic. We have a shot button and we have an option control button, uh, which will serve two purposes. Initially, what the op option control allows you to do is control the distance your option is from the ship. As far as the number of options we can have, you can have a total of four options. At, uh, at most at any time. And that's shared between two players in a uh, co-op game. So that's the big difference between single player and uh, uh, multi or a single player and uh, two player mode is the number of options that are available. So ultimately I would recommend if you're playing in co-op that it's best to work with your co-op partner and uh, divvy up the options in an even way. Uh, here we find ourselves with like facing the quick little like mid boss. Most of the stages do have like a larger enemy like to, to take out. So there are four possible weapons that we can upgrade throughout the course of or upgrade two throughout the course of the game. So those weapons are the N, which is uh, stands for normal. So that just basically upgrades your normal shot. And all the weapons can upgrade up to four uh, levels, which is pretty neat. Then there's also the V for Vulcan, which kind of is a rapid-fire shell. Um, it kind of looks like you're firing rapid-fire missiles once it's like fully leveled up. Then you've got the B, which is the boomerang, which will ricochet off of uh, enemies dealing uh, some uh, pretty decent like uh, damage but it's not always going to be um, useful depending on um, this, both the stage itself and the enemy um, layout that we encounter. Uh, then there's also the T which stands for twin laser uh, and that one will allow you to shoot behind you with like uh, lasers both front and back and uh, those are your four main weapons. So, uh, like uh, I was saying all that while the first boss fight was going on, I just want to say I do really like the way that that boss um, appears. It kind of rises up out of the water, and uh, it's just a really unique way to make an appearance. Uh, and then once um, you start fighting it, you realize that uh, it's being controlled by that octahedr or, uh, the octahedron that we were fighting uh, that's present in all the bosses in the first game. So it's uh, kind of a throwback to the original title and it's um, uh, the 
at least the marketing line for this game from um, Hamster themselves is that uh, they were not all destroyed or they weren't destroyed, uh, something along those lines. So that's basically what we have here in um, Thundercross 2. Uh, one other part I haven't talked about, so when you do have all four options available, whether in single player or two player, uh, you'll get the ability to pick up um, powerful upgrades for your um, options, which will basically turn your um, options into more powered up versions of themselves. And there are four uh, potential, uh, rather three weapons that we can pick up. So you saw me use the one of them against the first boss, and that was the laser. Um, now I'm using the crush, and this is the one th that I like the least, um, because it fires like, oops, uh, a bomb that kind of explodes a set distance uh, in front of the ship. So I feel like it's situationally useful, um, but once again, you're not going to find like um, the greatest uh, opportunities to always use that particular power-up. And then the third one is the fire power-up, um, which in this case kind of acts as like uh, you're firing firebirds at the enemies. This is like visually, it's really cool. Um, but it's not as um, awesomely useful as the um, flamethrower from the first game, which was like a kind of OP, truth be told. So here we find ourselves um, fighting like uh, the octahedron yet again. It's kind of taking control of this like um, snake-like uh, mech, and nope, well, we have to avoid its tail while shooting the core itself. And with that down, second stage is taken care of. And for the most part, we've basically seen Thundercross 2. The game has a total of seven stages. One thing to note is, although you can continue in all stages up to stage seven, it's not possible to continue in stage seven. So keep that in mind for uh, your playthroughs. Um, as far as the minus um, flavors are concerned for the game, I have two main ones. And uh, the first one is, is the game just suffers from power down syndrome, although not as bad as uh, some other Konami shooters, where if you die, it takes a while to build yourself back up to the level that uh, you were at before. Um, but uh, in this one, it feels like they're a little more generous with the power ups, and so it's not as big of um, a problem to build yourself back up to a decent um, strength. Then the other one is the way that the power-ups themselves are handled. So the power-ups will uh, change over time once they appear, but sometimes that makes it quite difficult to obtain some power-ups. For example, if you happen to have all four of the options, if you want to pick up the flame power-up, you have a very short window after it appears on the screen to get that um, power-up. Uh, once it's changed to the laser, you've uh, missed your opportunity. And if it decays uh, yet one more level to... If it decays one more level to the... Um, or if it decays to crush and then past that point, you'll just be getting the regular power-ups. I kind of wish that it would like cycle through... There would be power-ups that would be specifically for the... Um, powered up options and then like those were for the regular weapons rather than have them kind of be shared uh, between them although then maybe that wouldn't uh, come up nearly as frequently um, but uh, those are the two main like uh, minus flavors I have for it. as far as the uh, plus flavors are concerned though this game is relatively simple I feel it's a really like a uh, great fun example of your classic horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up so if you enjoy those kind of games it really has that classic arcade feel and like this one just comes across as just relatively like uh, fun and enjoyable uh, sometimes like a pedestrian but um, by no means is this like a, a bad game and it's one that I've really enjoyed my time with. Uh, then the other like a plus flavor, I just really like the art that this game has. Each stage has unique enemies um, 
that uh, you won't find on any other stage. So basically there's a lot of like uh, work here done um, with the sprites. The bosses are all like uh, different and uh, although some of the boss fights are more interesting and engaging than others, like this one actually is one that I find to be quite engaging. Um, there's like a, a decent amount of like variety to what we have going on. And so at the end of the day, like uh, Thundercross 2 is a title that I can recommend if you're a fan of early 90s horizontal scrollers or if you really enjoyed the original Thundercross. All right, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for joining us this week and I look forward to seeing you again next week.